All right, it is noon. We are here today to learn about creating tech training for staff. My name is Shelley Reed. I am the manager of Legal Services National Technology Assistance Project. We fondly call it LSNTAP for short. And I'm going to be turning over the presentation to our guest, Ellen Samuel, to introduce the rest of her team and our guest for this speaker series. Thank you for joining us. Oh, before I do that, I forgot, <laughs> I need to introduce, we'll be using a polling software today called Slido. If you are to take your um, phone and scan that QR code on the screen, you'll be able to join the polls. You also can go to slido.com and enter that number. And then throughout the presentation, if you, um, if you keep your phone, if you keep that window open, you'll be able to join all the polls throughout the presentation without having to scan that, that QR code again. If you have questions during the presentation, you also have the option to use the Q&A tab in Slido to add questions and other participants can upvote the ones that they would like to also have answered. That lets us make sure that we're answering the most important questions I wouldn't, well, most important might not be the right word, but for the questions that have the highest interest, I guess. So now I'm going to turn the presentation over to Ellen. Thank you, Shelley. Again, welcome. Uh, thank you, Shelley, for that introduction. And uh, we're going to be talking about creating and uh, presenting technology training to your staff. So, uh, Shelley, if you can go back one there, we're, we'll introduce ourselves. Um, <laughs> thank you so much. Terry, can you uh, tell us a little bit about you? Sure. My name is Terry Lawson. I am a program manager at Legal Services of Eastern Missouri. We are based in St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, I am what I would call a, an advocate of technology, and, and, a, and I like to say tech disciple. So I have run many trainings at our uh, program level and at organization level. Thanks. Terry is an amazing uh, Trainer, tech trainer, um, also as an attorney, right? So uh, lots of different hats, but we can talk a little bit more about, um, you know, how that actually works in a legal aid organization. Michael, tell us a little bit more about you. Hi, everyone. Michael Hernandez. I'm the director of client services at Just Tech. Um, I've either worked directly with a legal nonprofit or in my capacity now at Just Tech, working with many, many uh, legal nonprofits across the country for over 20 years at this point. So um, truly enjoy the work and appreciate um, Ellis and Tep having me on this webinar today. Wonderful. And I'm Ellen Samuel. I am the director of consulting at Just Tech. If you don't know who we are, uh, we are a uh, managed service provider. So we provide IT services and also consulting services. So we focus mo mainly on legal aid law firms. Uh, as my background, I am a licensed attorney. I was a supervising attorney at Prairie State Legal Services for our telephone intake service and online intake triage service. So I'm familiar with all of that technology, legal server, all, all that good stuff that you all use all the time. Um, I also am a certified information privacy professional and a master online teacher. I've been teaching legal technology for about five years uh, in college. So this is a passion of mine, um, a lot of fun to be able to put together trainings. Uh, and th this is also uh, services that we can provide as well to, to do training for, for legal aid. So let's talk a little bit about what we're gonna talk about. Now, if you could do the next slide. Okay, so really quickly, we will uh, first talk about training. So don't recreate the wheel. We're gonna talk about training that is already available to you. There is a lot of uh, really affordable, deep, free training available on the internet and available from, uh, from providers, or from service providers. So we're gonna talk about that a little bit more. And then we will talk about your, the best practices for uh, training your staff. And then at the end, we will have some time for questions and answers. As Shelly said, you can put those questions uh, onto the Slido question uh, tab, and then we can talk more about those at the end or throughout if it's uh, pertinent to what we're talking about. So the first slide here, our first poll here is what is your role? Uh, so if you have it, if you just joined us, there's gonna be a QR code that will be on the side here uh, that is for Slido. 
And um, when you have that pulled up, if you could just let us know a little bit more about you. What is your role? Are you IT staff, executive director, support staff, manager, supervisor, attorney, or none of the above? And then we will have see the results a bit so we can see who we're talking to. We'll give you a minute to do that. Okay, so lots of IT staff, attorneys. Ooh, a good, a good mix of people here. We really do rely on our support staff to do a, a lot of the technology training. So I'm glad you all are here as well. Okay, that is good to know. Mostly IT staff, wonderful. Okay, so we can move on. So our first section here is about not recreating the wheel. There, we are so lucky that there are so many free and affordable trainings available online. Uh, so, so many vendors have uh, things available. So, you know, Microsoft has an entire help site with trainings available. Legal Server, for example, um, has lots of different kinds of, of, of trainings. And YouTube is actually an amazing resource uh, where you can find training about nearly everything. Uh, so very exciting, you know, if you don't need to create the training yourself, go go look for it somewhere. Um, here again, LSN tab is an amazing resource where you can find all kinds of information, tech tips, send these out to your staff and recommend these resources uh, and use them that yourselves to review um, before you do your own training. Terry, can you tell us a little bit more about you know what kind of resources you use uh, to help train your staff yes yeah, sure we often rely on you know for example with legal server we often rely on legal servers help fields as a way to just uh, you know to, to basically jump start a slide deck on how things work and things like that we also uh, have an entire set of videos as we do these trainings for example on microsoft office tools we refer them internally to our video streams, but we take the information from things like Microsoft's uh, support pages and Microsoft Learn. You can go to, to a, uh, a segment called, I think it's learn.microsoft and, and it uh, will put you through an entire little class on it. So those are nice jump starts for us as far as, you know, this is what, what you would basically need to know to be familiar with the, with the material, familiar with the program. And those are already built. So for us, that's that's a good way for us to quickly put together a, a seminar presentation. Yeah, that's great. And Michael, did you have anything you wanted to add here? Yeah, so to add, um, so with the free resources like YouTube, which is a great um, resource, I do try to avoid um, having people search for those on their own and find the ones that I think um, ap apply best. Um, and and actually try to save those in you know sort of either you know a, a separate so, site or you know your own sort of internal YouTube site. When staff kind of go on their own and find things, I, I find that they could sometimes go down a rabbit hole because they're watching a video and then there's other videos that are kind of like it. And not all trainings are equal, so. You know, I, I would if if you are looking at free resources like YouTube as an example, I would look and find the ones that you feel are best and 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 find a place for them. Whether it's you you just create your own <laughs> YouTube channel, um, or uh, you know, uh, in in another location, so that way they're specifically just kind of focusing on the trainings that you have linked them to. Um, with Legal Server, also as an example, I mean they've got a great um, online, you know, resource of, of videos and, and documentation. The the challenge I find there too is that, you know, look, our organizations, you know, do things in a different way. Um, and, you know, so the way legal server is training on some things might not be exactly how you want staff doing things, you know, from, you know, the way, um, you know, uh, certain forms are filled in, you know, timekeeping, whatever whatever the case may be. So there, even though, you know, you could just, anyone could just go to legal server and, and look up the online resources. There, I would also try to, you know, 
encourage staff to look at some of the trainings that you have gone over and have approved. So that way they're not learning to do something a different way than maybe how you're teaching or wanting staff to do it in, internally. Yeah, those are those are all great points. Uh, there are other more of more affordable, some affordable resources as well that you can uh, that are better vetted than maybe YouTube. So law school websites are a great resource. Uh, they finally some law schools are starting to teach uh, legal technology. Back when I went to law school, there was zero legal technology training, um, but law schools are starting to get on that bandwagon. So you can also look at the, you know, the, whatever your um, state law school or uh, really at lots of law schools, they have free resources available and those tend to be pretty good and, and pretty well vetted. Um, I know I've found some on creating a table of contents, a table of authorities and word. Uh, those, those are free and, and they're, those are usually pretty good. Uh, you might want to also look at um, massive open online courses, which also tend to be pretty high quality and free. Uh, you know, that those sometimes those are more of a time commitment, but for those, you know, if you are planning to do trainings of your own staff, those can be helpful so that you know what you're talking about before those trainings. Also for all the litigators out there, I really wanna put a plug into the, for the Electronic Discovery Institute. I think it's edi.org, but if you Google Electronic Discovery Institute, it is an amazing resource. It is $1. Uh, and the reason they do that is because they don't wanna get spammed. They don't wanna have a lot of people logging on and like, you know, taking advantage of the resources without putting in the dollar, but they have, they, it is really a free resource and it is incredible. They have, probably 50 hours of videos on uh, the entire electronic discovery process. It's mostly focused on the federal rules because, um, you know, it's, a, it's a, a nationwide organization. But for those of you who have baby lawyers who don't understand discovery, they don't understand the rules, um, even for people who need, you know, a bit of a refresher or going up uh, maybe into some of those appeals. It's really interesting and uh, basically free information, really high quality. Uh, so that's a resource I'd love for you all to check out as well. So, uh, sorry, just to add, um, and I'm gonna include it in affordable training, you know, look at in-house staff that might be able to, to do some things. I say affordable because time is money, right? So if someone's, uh, you know, spending time on this and, you know, the way I try um, to do it is if, if someone's particularly good in a certain area and keep the training short, right? So even if it's a how to format a brief, um, you know, a table of contents, things like that. If, if, you, if you know of staff that are really good at a particular area or you just like the way that they do it, right? You, you talk to them and say, hey, would you be willing to put like a quick, you know, 15, 20 minute training together? And you know any staff that's interested, um, you know could could join, and you know maybe we'll record it too, and then have that available for any new staff that starts. So, you know, don't shy away from from uh, looking internally. And I know every we're all sort of busy doing work, um, but if you preface it by you know look you know 15, 20 minute training, you know if you could do something like that. You know, I think with if if they know that particular area well, they, they might spend an hour tops, right, preparing for it, doing the training, and you know, uh, the and, and the recording. So, you know, look look for in house staff too that that might be able to assist. Yeah, that's that's a good point. I think when we talk about staffing, and I think we're going to talk about that a little bit later, uh, re reminding ourselves how much proper training increases effectiveness, efficiency, and security as well. Really, you know, we need to make sure that our staff understand that according to the, the rules of professional conduct, the risks and benefit of benefits of technology, that's part of uh, the uh, competency rules in uh, the vast majority of states, right? So this is really an essential ethical duty that you have to your staff to make sure that they are being properly trained on this technology. Um, this this slide here we're, we're showing some of the not free but still pretty affordable resources um this is uh cbt nuggets michael can you tell us a little bit more about what that is yeah so th this is a this is a, a great resource especially for some of the it staff that might be on 
uh, that are, are looking to provide um, some training, you know, for IT staff. I mean, they they do have areas for outside of it, but um, I, I just want to cover this since we had such a large number of, of IT staff on. If you are looking for training for IT staff, this is a great resource. They've got great um, uh, videos, tutorials, um, you know, and and um, some of them, you know, you're sort of walking through it, you know, live. Um, you know, interactive uh, training. So th that's definitely one that I would I would look at. And that one is uh, about sixty dollars a month per user. They do have enterprise pricing available, um, but I'm assuming you wouldn't need that for your entire staff, right, Michael? You would just want that for your IT staff. So they want you to <laughs> sign everyone up, of course. But of course, um, yeah. And in, in the spirit of the you know, us, us nonprofit. Um, yeah, we, we work around that with just having a, a, a couple of accounts to kind of share around. And the, the other resource we have here is LinkedIn Learning. They really, this is $20 a month per user and they also have enterprise pricing available. They have incredible, like everything you could think of. Uh, not only technology trainings, management training, project management training, it, it is, it's an incredible resource. So maybe some licenses there as well. We also recommend uh, Udemy or Udemy, uh, Coursera, edX. These are all pretty affordable places where you can get really high quality training. Even if you're not providing them, you know, a license for everybody in your organization. Um, yes, N10 as well. Thank you, Shelly. Uh, you can still, the tr training the trainers, right? If you have people who are particularly interested in training, uh, these are amazing resources for them to make sure that their skills are up to date and that they uh, kind of have a good framework to be able to teach uh, the, these technology skills. Harry, would, did you have anything else you wanted to add to this one? Nope. Okay, wonderful. Well, and we apologize, our uh, um, PowerPoint is, is going a little funky. So if we can try to go to the next slide. Okay, so our next poll question is, what kind of training does your staff need? Once again, if you joined us late, please make sure that you scan in that QR code. It will bring you to Slido. And uh, Shelley, I think this is a, um, a typing in word cloud one. Is that right? Yes. Okay. So if you can type in what kind of training, and, and here we're talking about uh, IT training, um, but you know, in general, what, what kind of training are you all looking for? And what kind of training do you need? So if you are the trainer, um, what kind of training? Are you looking for? Let's see, and then seeing some comments here. LinkedIn Learning has been helpful. Philip says if you don't have a paid subscription, you may be able to gain access by logging in via your local library for free. That is a great point. Also, since I um, I'm a, an instructor at a few colleges, I get a, some amazing perks there, and uh, that comes with uh, my my library. Um, as well. So yeah, definitely check your library. There's some amazing resources there. Okay, so the types of training, some people are still typing. We're seeing SharePoint, that is a big one. We see that a lot. Um, things are changing uh, in the way that we store things in the cloud. And, uh, you know, it, it's a little different than many people are used to. So Microsoft Office, for sure. Specific applications, cybersecurity awareness, for sure. Legal server, okay. Microsoft Office prefer something with a live instructor, instructor, legal server. Okay, great, wonderful. Okay. So we're gonna, uh, oh, this is what kind of training do you need? <laughs> if you have anything different. So you, are, that was mostly seemed like it was for the, the users. If you are IT staff or really any staff, do you have any particular IT needs that you have that you need to be trained on? Feel free to type it in if there's anything you can think of. Networking, cybersecurity, that kind of thing. Data analytics, right? Yeah, that's great. We actually did, Shelly and I, with uh, some other staff, we did a, a data presentation at ITC. Um, and uh, yeah, data, that's, a, that's a huge need, I think, for, for the community to make sure that we're getting good data and that we're analyzing it properly. Power BI, SharePoint, case management, Excel, everyone's favorite. 
Min administration, Microsoft 365. Okay, wonderful. Well, thank you all for that. These are definitely things that we're seeing in the community, lots of resources available. Uh, again, Shelly, any questions for us before we move on to creating training? Oops, we're going. I do not have any questions in the app, um, okay. and I have not seen any in chat. Okay. Let me see if I can get back to where we're supposed to be in the slides. <laughs> That's okay. Um, so Terry, can you here. tell us? Yes, there we are. Can you hear? So how we're moving on to our, our next section here is, um, you know, we've talked about the free resources that are available. Definitely, if those are you can find good resources, do not you do not need to you know create everything a whole cloth. But sometimes you know for your particular state, for your area, you know the areas of law that you are working on for your systems, there is not good training available, or it's not specific enough to. Uh, what you need your staff to do. So sometimes you have to figure out, you know, what people need and, and how to present that information. So Terry, how do you all um, at your firm figure out what, what skills people need and what you're going to train on? Right. So I, I will tell the story of, of uh, the COVID crisis as, as kind of our learning point for this. Everybody was plunged into a, a situation, of course, that we weren't expecting. Everybody has to work at home. At that point, even though I had been asking for them for, for years, uh, everybody didn't have cameras, didn't have two monitors, didn't have scanners at home or scanners at work. So we had some technology needs there right away. And because I've been pushing that, I also kind of became the de facto spokesman for the training for all these things because... Um, I think Teams, for example, in MS Office wouldn't have been adopted at all had it not been for the COVID crisis, not in our office, because people were just locked into using email, right? So we had immediate need for Teams training and some other types of trainings, um, but we also wanted to know what, what did the users think they needed. So uh, I just jumped into Microsoft Office 365 and looked at all the apps that it had and started digging around through those came across Microsoft Forms. And of course, people use Google Forms or have used it. Uh, I think prior, Microsoft has the competing product. And so I did do um, two things. I said, well, we're going to have trainings on Thursdays. I'll try to do one a month called those Tech Thursdays and try to make them fairly regular. Because like a TV show, if somebody knows it's every Thursday, you know, they might miss one, but go to the next. I think that helped in a in a sense that people could rely on, you know, I have a regular place to go. It also keeps things top of mind by having that regularity. And then I did a poll each month where I would say, what do you think you want to learn? And we would have a staff survey for that. Now, the caution on a poll is people usually don't know what they don't know. Uh, to quote Mr. Rumsfeld, you might remember, there are known unknowns and unknown unknowns, right? Uh, which is crazy, but it's it's true. It, it particularly, I think, in tech, people don't realize what they're not good at. Um, so one of the things that I would urge folks to do is, you know, make your list of here's the software we have and see where the interest is. But then on the things that nobody mentions or the things no one votes for, ask yourself the question why, right? And you might have to delve a little deeper into that. For example, in our place, no one ever would say we need Microsoft Word training. But I can tell you everybody needs it. And how do we know that? Because if you go around and just ask questions, you know, do you know this or have you done this before? The answer is no, I just know how to type in it and I, I don't know that. But if you don't realize you're you're not as in tune as you think, right? You're overconfident in your skill level, which is a common thing everyone does. Um, you may not realize that you're not trained in it. So uh, a little little point of fact that I use here, if, you, if we interview folks, I often ask them, I see you say you're familiar with Microsoft Office. Uh, yep, I'm very familiar with that. Okay, you've used Word a lot. Yes, I am. Do you consider yourself a, an intermediate, a beginner, or what? Oh, I'm a, I'm, I would say I'm an intermediate user. And then you might ask them, do you know how to insert a table? Tell me how you would insert a table in Microsoft and their face goes blank, right? Because people oversell what they know because there's that little bit of fear and uncertainty and doubt. 
about what they don't know. So when we when we poll people, what I would tell everyone is poll all your systems and you see the enthusiasm behind, I know I need to learn X, Y, Z, but on the things they aren't showing enthusiasm and you know that's a key tool, that's the time to go ferret out what, what is it that people are missing and why is it that nobody thinks they need training in this? Because that really should tell you something just as much as an answer that is overwhelmingly the favorite for training. And then we just, after that, scheduled out you know, what we thought was the critical thing first. And in COVID, that was learning Teams, learning email, learning OneDrive, learning SharePoint. And so we immediately went through those month after month, regardless of what the polls told us, because we knew those were the key softwares. And then we went to the other things that people said, it would be nice if we had this and this and this, those extras we did on other months. So that's kind of how we handled the scheduling and, and figuring out what training was needed. Terry, Terry let, let, let me say, um, yeah, I hope I hope people were taking notes there because you just gave really great advice. Um, the, the one thing I would add um, is, is ask and you know say no judgment, right? What are some of the things that you feel like is taking you longer that maybe you think there should be an easier way, right? Because again, what they don't know, they don't know. So it's, you know, sometimes it's really about how you ask the question to get the, the information that you need. Um, so everything you said, Terry, was, was spot on. I just wanted to add, it, add that piece because I think that's another way of trying to get information from folks again, you know, saying, "Look, no judgment, right? We're we're just looking to improve, but you know, let us know what what are some of the tasks that you feel like are taking you, you know, longer time to do, and you just feel like there's there's got to be a better way." I'd like to go ahead. Go ahead no, go ahead, Terry. Go ahead. No. Just to to follow up on that, um, I always sold trainings to our staff as, "Would you like to make your life easier? Would you like to save time?" And that was the first line in my email out. And I and then I would say, well, if you do, this training is going to save time in these specific ways. And that really shot up, you know, I think shot up people that wanted to attend. You know, I'm not here to drudge, you know, to blah, blah, blah. I'm going to make your life easier. I'm going to save you at least 15 minutes a day. Would you like that? Then come to the training. And if you offer it as something they gain that's very finite time, right? That's going to be really an easy way to get people interested. Yeah, agree. Yeah, the only thing better than that is, uh, you, would you like to uh, win a free iPad? Um, <laughs> outside of that, that that's the best. The time, Terry. Yeah, that's great. Or CLE credit, which is not well, as yeah. difficult as as you might think to uh, sign up for that. Uh, it is a bit of an extra step, and maybe your support staff wouldn't be so interested, but. Um, you know, especially if your state has a requirement for technology training and for for CLE, uh, in which more and more states are getting that requirement, uh, this is definitely a, a great opportunity. You know, if you have a director of advocacy or director of training or whoever handles uh, you know, training on the substantive law at your firm, I would work with that person to try to get CLE credit for some of these trainings because that that really is a huge draw. That pizza, an iPad, you know, that kind of thing. Um, wonderful. Okay, should we move on to the next slide? If we can. Okay, wonderful. Uh, so how do we, you know, you're like, this is all well and good, but how do we actually practically do this? Um, so first of all, as, you know, we're we're in legal aid. There's not a whole lot of resources. We probably most firms can't afford to hire somebody uh, to full time train staff uh, or more than one person. Or maybe that one person does all the substantive training and all the ethical training and everything. Um, so you likely need to find people uh, on your staff who are interested in doing training or have teaching experience. I promise you, you have people on staff who would love to do this. Who would you know, find this a great break to be able to help out the rest of the staff with tech training. You probably have at least one person in each office who goes and fixes the printer, right? Without having to call the printer people. Uh, another, you know, place is to look for speakers from maybe the uh, ABA tech show panels or ITC. Uh, there's a lot of podcasts available. 
Um, there's a legal uh, talk network that actually has a, a lot of resources available there. You may be able to get those people to come do trainings and, and, and speak to your staff as well. So lots of resources um, uh, there. You wanna make sure that you are keeping it short. So people have pretty short attention spans, especially when it comes to complicated tech stuff, right? So making those trainings bite-sized, uh, maybe 10, 15 minutes max, really focusing on one piece. So if you're doing styles in Word, right? Really make that short, concentrate on that one little part, don't go too far, and maybe do a basic training, an intermediate training, and an advanced training. Make sure that you are recording those trainings and posting those. So if you have an intranet site um, where you keep your trainings, make sure that you have those organized. And that's really hard, uh, I, to be honest, you, having somebody make sure that everything is up to date and organized. But you really want to make sure that someone is tasked with that um, and uh, make, making sure that they're updated as well. Uh, Shelly says Microsoft Stream is a great way. Uh, to record. That is true. And the, one of my favorite things about stream is that they're really good with the closed captioning as well. So you can do, uh, you can have your, all your videos captioned, which is great for accessibility purposes as well. Um, Terry, can you tell us a little bit more about how, what LSEM does, uh, the gamification in particular? Yes. Happy to do that. Uh, we do, as I mentioned, by the way, record and post the everything so people can be trained. One thing I would say about stream and others is, is I see the, the view count is low on ours unless I drive people to it. So it's more than just record, but you do have to drive them to it, right? So your onboarding process has to be, have you seen these four videos? And then you have to check that they watch the videos. And if you don't do that, the videos are pointless. So do keep in mind, we're not doing it just to say, oh, we have them recorded, but that has to be incorporated in a way that the people actually want to go view them. So when I bring on new new attorneys, I have a checklist and planner that's my onboarding tasks. And that's what is on mine is you're going to see this, 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 and we're going to talk about that and get feedback. With respect to gamifying and how we gamify training, I'll give the story of Legal Server when we converted over. We everyone was really concerned about how do we get people to, to drop prime and use this, and everyone's going to be confused and nervous, et cetera. So what we did as we started to handle our, our go live date is we set up some training sessions, just like we did here, where we said, okay, we're going to have this on certain days, if they're going to be regular, and we would have trainings on how to do certain tasks in legal server. Before the switchover occurred, right, while it was still in demo mode, and you can go in there and play and not break anything. So we would tell them, hey, can't break anything. And we're going to we're going to do this. We just showed you how to do case notes and time entries. The first program to have 100 case notes and X hours of time uh, gets a lunch, gets sandwiches, gets whatever. And what we found is that that was the motivator. You know, a sandwich, right, is the motivator to get people, all of them, to actually use the product that they're not even needing to use yet. We haven't switched you know, to take the time out of their day to go do something that's not part of their workflow because they were competing with other programs because they wanted their program to be number one. And we always announced out of our like 17 programs, we always announced, you know, boy, uh, day one, you know, program X is in the lead. Remember, you know, this is open for the week. And then we would announce the top five. And on the bigger things we did like that is we trained legal server, we would give prizes one, two, three program, you know, and, and and our total budget that we spent on that stuff. So I can hear people's pain about budget is budget, right? But we spent far less than the cost of one big iPad for all of it. Okay. We, we ended up only spending, I think, under 500 bucks total for um, all the lunches we gave and all of it, because, you know, you're giving lunch for five people. That's not that expensive, right? We gave gift cards to uh, Quick Trip or to uh, coffee places, you know, five bucks each and so forth. Another thing you can give for free that you just have to get your buy-in from executive level is time, right? So we did that. We said for this task, when it was one of our biggest things, and I designed basically a, you know, you're going to take this fake case and you're going to do this, 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 and this with it. And I basically took them through a case from open to close in legal server 
we had a fake one set up and then we'd say, add time to it, make your note on this, prepare it to close here. We had that on a, on a, like a little test, a little quiz, right? And then on that one, the program that did the best, they were able to get like an hour or two out of work early on Friday. Well, how hard is that, right? It's not hard to get that as long as you have buy-in. Say, look, if, if they study up and get it, they're going to get a free hour back, right? And that, it worked great. And everybody told me they were surprised that it worked so well. And I said, well, this is what teachers do. I, I graduated college as a teacher. I taught a year and then went to law school. But, you know, with kids, you always have to make it fun. Adults are just big kids, right? If you make it drudgery, they're not going to like it. If you make it fun, they will want to do it, even if they never understood why they're doing it or that this tech is important. You've now made it a game. That is the essence of what Gamify is. And if you notice all kinds of software and apps, that's all they do now is Gamify. You know, oh, you've got more points. Oh, this, oh, that. It's all gamification now, right? Because that's what motivates people. It really does. That's, that's, those are incredible tips. Um, Michael, can you tell us a little bit about reaching out to your board? You, you have some experiences with uh, how, how that can help with training. Yeah, so um, so yeah, uh, where I was working at, um, you know, directly for, actually, working with Legal Services NYC, um, and yeah, you know, we needed to do training like most organizations, and was at a board meeting, and you know, sort of the idea, um, you know, sort of struck um, with myself and um, you know, a, a CIO and. Let's let's talk to the board. Let's see, you know, because we had some pretty big law firms on the board and we knew some of them had to have um, in-house training. So we really lucked out there. Um, and one of the um, the law firms had an in-house trainer and it was kind of slow, a slow period of time for them during the summer. So they said, look, you know, use our trainer for the next, you know, two, three months, um, you know, one, one or two days a week um and just get them to all of our, our all of our offices i mean we had like 15 16 sites at the time um so we we really lucked out and so we got free training um and it was very targeted training on on microsoft word excel outlook and you know the trainer did a, a fantastic job so we we really lucked out so yeah talk talk to your board see if if they have any in-house trainers or access to trainers that would be willing to do it pro bono um, for your organization. Can't hurt to ask, right? And of course they uh, could say is no. Them, right. And it looks good for them. So uh, that, that's an amazing idea that I hope you all uh, can take out of this and, and maybe find some more free training, good quality training. Uh, let's move on to the next slide. So just some challenges. I think we've we've already hit on most of these knowledge management. This is a, a challenge throughout firms in general, especially for legal aid, because most law, legal aid firms don't have somebody dedicated to knowledge man management. Here, we're talking about managing all of the information and, and training and resources that your firm has. Um, you really need to have a really a, a, um, a focus on that from, from the top down to make sure that everything is staying up to date, organized. Um, we always have a lack of staff, a lack of time, a lack of motivation, and maybe a lack of inspiration. Uh, Jerry, do you have any thoughts, any tips about um, how to deal with this within a legal aid firm? Yes, this is one of those dry topics, right? But I, what I do is, um, I try to lead by example on this, first of all, and I think you need IT's help um, to lead people to knowledge management in a way that's not wonky. So what I would say there is uh, when we did our first transition to new servers uh, back when I basically about the same time as we did live, uh, went, went live with legal server, uh, we realized what a mess everybody's files were, right? And, and people want to give lawyers um, uh, carte blanche license to do whatever they want to do. But what you find out is, hey, I'm not telling you, you know, you can say to them, I'm not telling you we're going to control how your program runs because I know your program's unique and you have special needs, right? But I am going to give you seven buckets in your directory file folder, right? And those seven buckets should fit all your files, right? 
And these are what they're going to be. You can do something like that. And everybody thought that's not going to work. Well, we did that and adopted that all the way across the organization in one fell swoop. And we really didn't have a lot of trouble with it. Why did we do that? Because now we know that this one folder is called client folder and everything to do with clients is in that folder. Now, everybody's needs are different, but this is something that you can, I think people are afraid to impose structure, but most people want more structure than they realize. It's one of those things they don't know they're missing it until it's gone. And, and then you will see that it, it does work out that with just a few tweaks of the IT controls, you will get cleaner files and people will be able to find things faster. And then you have to reiterate, where are those things? You know, remind people, where do they put the things they need to, to put places? So all our training resources are here. Our staff, um, our staff memos are here. All the constant forms we use are here. If you're not already automating those to teams with, you know, cards that pop up, at the very least, there ought to be standardized folders for where that kind of stuff goes. And that's sort of step one to knowledge management to me. If you're letting people do whatever, they will do whatever because you haven't given them any structure, right? Just like a child needs structure, they don't really want to go to bed or take that nap, but they need it. And we're the same, right? We do need the structure even when we fight about it. So don't be afraid to push back on that notion. And, you, and it's not a matter of needing to fight them. It's I'm going to make your life easier. You're going to know where to find things. You're not going to lose files. And when somebody dies, God forbid, when somebody moves, God forbid, you can walk in and know what's going on. I use the hit by the bus principle. If I got hit tomorrow by a bus, could you walk in and know where to find my stuff? If you can't do that, I think you got a knowledge management problem. So that's step one. Um, you had another follow-up, but I don't want to run us out of time. So go ahead, Ellen, with whatever else we might need to cover here. I was just going to say, in addition to that naming conventions, that's something that um, a lot of firms don't have. And you see all kinds of files named all kinds of crazy things in, in different orders, and nobody can find what file is which and what version is which. Um, so just to add on to that, um, naming, naming conventions as well. Um, we, for the lack of inspiration, again, there are so many resources available. Um, if you have, you, you're not sure what, if you, you hold your staff, you're still not sure what to teach. There's a ton of uh, newsletters available, tech, tech newsletters, legal specific, non-legal specific. Um, it's uh, Deborah Savadra, Jim Calloway, Miss Excel. These are things that, that you can subscribe to to review and maybe get some inspiration there. Okay, yes, we do. I think we do still need to move along. Um, the next slide, please. We also want to take into consider, consideration learning styles and also accommodations for our users who have uh, disabilities, right? Um, so we want to make sure that we are reviewing um, the different ways that people learn things. And, and again, Creating different modalities and, and ways that people can receive your information is very helpful. Step-by-step -step guides are incredible, especially with uh, screenshots. I make my students do them uh, every semester. They hate doing them, but it is so helpful to walk through those processes and then be able to show that to someone else where they can just walk through and read through. And this is, this is what I do next in our system. Again, recording the trainings, interactive training exercises and demonstrations like Terry was talking about, do a little quiz. If, you're, if you have a learning management system that allows you to do interactive training, that is incredible. Um, just a, a, an unrelated a side, uh, side plug for one for my classes, I use a program called the Legal Service, no, the Legal, oh, what, oh my goodness, now I can't remember. Uh, oh, National Society of Legal Technology, that's what it is. Um, and it, they provide interactive training on like 32 different programs, including law specific programs. So I'm not related to them in any way, but uh, I do use them in my classes and that they have incredible trainings available where you actually click through and they teach you how to do a table of authorities. They teach you uh, how to use um, a case management system or not not legal server, but some of the other ones like Clio is on there. Um, so other resources are available there. And then again, make sure to uh, do enable your closed captioning and transcriptioning so people can read. Um, Terry, what were you gonna say about snipping? Yeah, I put in the chat here, um, I keep snip and sketch on my task, you know, uh, 
what is it? Task board, task, uh, task board, yeah. at the bottom. Um, I keep it on there. And every time somebody emails me, hey, Terry, how does this work? I snip and sketch that page that they're on, mark up what the problem is, highlight the spot and send it to them. And then I do one more thing usually. I drop that snip into my IT folder, my tech folder in whatever program it is with a, with a title that's descriptive for me, right? Then when I have trainings, I, you know, oh yeah, these things have all come up. These are pain points. So I have snippets of all the pieces of the program, the page most people have problems with. And guess what I just built? I just built my training, right? Because I have, you know, if I've already done seven, eight, nine snips, that's, that's it, right? That gives you a framework for what you're going to train on that program. So the good news there is you can reshare those. In a perfect world, it's not one-on-one -on -one through email, but maybe an entire team, uh, a team's team, right? Or your org-wide chat, whatever that is, you could push it out that way. And, you know, not to embarrass anyone, you don't say, somebody came to me with this problem, but you go, you know, you might, you might want to know this, blah, blah, this is how this works. And again, it's, it's a snippet and it's so much help for them because it's visual and it gets into this issue of how do we learn? And so, you know, it takes no time to highlight and put a red circle around the thing they should be clicking or that control that the people every time forget to do. And it's so easy to say, oh, you didn't check the box. Well, circle the box and say, here it is. You can check the box, boop, right? So, I mean, that's super useful. Keep, keep snip and sketch or anything like that, those screen caps. I can't tell you how much more people have responded to that for me. It's been really good for us. It's just so much easier to understand rather than just writing it out, right? Go to this. If you just point to it, you're like, okay, that's where it is, right? Um, yeah, that, that's definitely great, uh, great tips there. Shelly, if we can move on to the next slide. Accessibility needs to be, you know, part of all of our trainings and all of our practice and our work with our employees and our clients, making sure that we are presenting, you know, our trainings in an accessible way. Um, re just really important things to think about while you're creating your training. And uh, luckily for us, technology has made this so much easier, right? There are so many resources available to make sure that your training is accessible, uh, that you have uh, your you have uh, the, the <clears throat> proper colors, uh, that you um, have a voiceover where necessary, right? The computers can do that all for us now. Um, so make sure that you are uh, reviewing that. Terry, tell a little bit about how you all use uh, maybe for your images uh, for accessibility. Yes, uh, one thing I I can tell everyone is you know even every image now you know you can put a a title there for people who aren't visually able to see it and it, you can describe it. So that's another thing that I've done on the resources that we have is we always try to make sure we have actually filled that, both on the web pages we use and on our training tools. We make sure that that, um, that title or the, 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 the visual element is there. And another mention, Open Advocate does um, have something called Write Clearly. That's a, a free tool that helps put things into plain language. And there are some other free tools Open Advocate and other places are doing that, that help you uh, and I'm talking about not just for your staff, but but facing outward, you know, that you can use to comb through your materials and make them a little a little better, a little simpler. So I would encourage exploring those kinds of tools that are often free or low priced, uh, things like automatic translators, too. There's a little danger to that, to be sure, but it is better to have something than nothing a lot of times, right? It, you know, some kind of translation is often better for certain things than, than no translation at all when you're dealing with, with outside constituencies. Okay, wonderful. Uh, and again, some resources on this slide about uh, where you can find more information on making your training and your materials accessible. 
We're gonna move on now to training, more specifically training IT staff, right? So, you know, we have our non-IT staff that need to learn how to use the technology. But we also need to make sure that our IT staff know what they're doing as well. Uh, so Michael, can you tell us a little bit more about some best practices and recommendations for training IT staff? Yeah, so, I mean, we've, we've already talked about some tools, um, you know, that you could use, you know, I mean, one big thing, right, any of the applications or equipment that you use, find out directly from them, right? So if you use Microsoft Office, find out what trainings are available through Microsoft. If you're on G Suite or Google Workspace, you know, talk to them about what training. If you've got, you know, a firewall, Cisco, Fortinet, you know, talk to them, you know, what, what trainings you have available. I mean, those are really good resources. Um, I, I'll, I, I put some stuff on this slide that I think is sometimes overlooked um, when, when bringing on new staff. I mean, consistency is something that's, that's very important, especially with, with how cer certain things are done, especially like onboarding and offboarding. I mean, I've, I've worked with a number of places where, you know, I've, I've helped uh, improve their internal processes and there are things like onboarding and offboarding where there, there's not um, sort of that policy and procedure in place. And it's like, well, you know, we just need to create the account and make sure that they are able to log in. And when they leave, we need to make sure they can't log in. Well, it was like, right, but there, there are a lot of other things to factor in. So for whoever is in sort of charge of IT and, you know, you, you, you take this off in bites, you know, a little bit at a time if you don't have um, a lot of this in place, but really document the process of of what's happening um, in these, you know, some of these examples that I that I've provided. Um, because if you have it documented, you, it's also visually a little bit easier to see what you've potentially missed. Um, and then also, if some scenario comes up that doesn't really come up often, it's then something then you could include in the documentation so you have it going forward. Um, and where this is all helpful is, so you've done all this and you, your internal staff, IT staff are able to do this, but then when someone leaves and then you have to train someone that's com coming on board, now you have this document that's like uh, here, when, when we're onboarding and offboarding, here's our process, here's our protocol, here's our procedure, just to make sure that user has access to everything that they need. Um, or when they leave, we make sure we've locked them out of all the, necessary accounts, you know, there's an email forward or a bounce back message letting people know they're no longer there. Voicemail is covered, you know, as well. Um, it's just for someone just coming on, you don't want them to sort of guess what they need to do. Um, and it's, unfortunately, it's just one of those things that are, I, I just feel like can be easily overlooked. It's like, you, you think it's an easy enough process, um, but it in the end, there's so many different parts that it's just so much easier if you have it um, uh, documented. If you have reoccurring issues that for, for whatever reason you can't resolve, um, you know, either with the equipment change or with the application or in some other way, um, you know, having that information to any you know, IT staff is important too because you're gonna save yourself time because someone coming on if this is a reoccurring issue, they're going to try what they're what they know, and it might take them. Maybe they get it right away, but maybe they don't. And you might you'll you'll save them a lot of time if you give them, hey, you know, this is an issue we run into. This is how we resolve it, versus them trying to figure it out and then maybe potentially get to where you are. So um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop there for the sake of time. But you know, really, you know, look to document your process and, and it's it's a living document. It's not going to stay static for too much, for too long. You're going to keep um, making changes, adding things, maybe removing things. Um, but but yeah, it, that's that's really something that I feel is overlooked. Okay, wonderful. Um, Michael, I want to say just 15 seconds. I use onboarding uh, planner tasks for that. And whatever checklist tool you use, it doesn't have to be as fancy as a hardware book or an SOP book. But even that, it, or like you say, living document, very easy to add and subtract tasks. And when we find out, oh yeah, we forgot this new person's blah, 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 you add it to your little planner task to-do list and you just recopy that for each person and send it to their organization, send it to the program or whatever. And now they know these are the seven things they need to get accomplished. That right. has really helped us not miss things. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. 
That's great, Terry. Check, like Shelly said, checklists are, they're good enough for doctors, they're good enough for us too. Um, wonderful. We're going to speed through these last few slides because I understand there's some questions there. Uh, just talking about training non-IT staff, some recommendations here. Uh, big, you know, if you're using Office 365, there's lots of lots of things that you need to train on with Word. If you're using Excel, uh, Excel can be very easy to mess up. Uh, you know, making sure people understand how to use formulas and, and that they're actually getting the right information there. Uh, email basics, organization, security, uh, forms, planner, SharePoint, OneDrive, Teams, Power Automate. So lots of stuff that you can trade on for Word. Then onto the next slide. Case management system, right? This is probably your lifeblood of your organization and you wanna make sure people are using it properly uh, and that it is secure as well, that they're using it securely. So really essential to make sure that you are using that, you are training on that regularly. And if you have any changes that you're training on that as well. If you're using practice area specific software, a lot of firms uh, you know, do bankruptcies or family law cases and are using very specific software there. Uh, many times those vendors, again, will have the, the training available, but make sure that your staff is up to date and understands how to do that. Uh, some other suggestions, doing security, making sure everyone understands what multi-factor authentication is, um, phishing awareness, right? So, uh, you know, if you get, if your system gets breached, it's likely because somebody clicked on a funky link in an email. So you need to make sure that everybody's being regularly trained on what to look out for there uh, to prevent that. And then um, time management. Um, Terry, did you want to tell us about how you, what you focus on for Word? Sure, I know we're short on time now. Um, this slide has the best book that I've found on Word, and that does tie into one of the questions that we had is, you know, for Microsoft training, what do I use? For at least Word, um, I used this, this, I think it was $50 book from Affinity Consulting. And uh, Baron Henley is the guy that comes to various seminars that I go to, our, our Missouri uh, solo and small firm convention. He's there a lot. You've probably heard of Affinity before, um, but the, the thing I like about that book is it provides what the, what the optional settings in Word that are buried should be for legal professionals, and I've never seen anybody else train that. So this is something UIT folks can be doing for people that would really help them and eliminate a lot of frustration is, you know, get them to go in, or maybe you can set it from a... a a management standpoint and push out, these are the ways, our standard way we're gonna set up Word that's optimized for legal work because it is not optimized out of the box. It takes a lot of different tweaks and changes to make it simpler to use and more intuitive. So that's what I'll say about Word. This one is a big thing, but things you might train about are listed in those bullet points. And if you poll your folks and say, do you know how to make an actual, um, doc in, that is a DOT template or DOTX template, I, I guarantee you the majority of your folks won't know. And that's really the kinds of things we ought to be doing. It, I, I would leave you with this because I know we've got more to cover, but you know, Microsoft Word for most is the tool in the toolbox that we use more than anything else. And it's, it's probably the least understood program that we use day to day from a function of the amount you know versus what is there to know. So that always astounds me with lawyers that our biggest tool that we use all the time to do all our work and almost all of us don't know how to use it in a well. So that's what I would leave you with is there's, there is a time and a need for that. Okay, wonderful, thank you. We have one more poll. Um, maybe while we're doing this poll, we can see if there are any other questions uh, and on Slido. Here again, uh, if you are, new again to the training or to the to webinar, please make sure you scan that QR code. And uh, we're asking here, what are your training challenges? What has stopped your firm from providing quality trainings or as many trainings as you would like or, or what uh, needs to be done? Um, do we have other questions um, that we should try to tackle? Can we tackle those two anonymous uh, questions on the, the, the app just in total? I know we're at time, but uh, what resource do you use for Microsoft training, Terry? Do you have any testing or checklist to gauge knowledge? 
I do use um, learn.microsoft and support.microsoft so that I understand what I need to train. And then I make I make my own from those snippets and things that I told you. So really, I'm just using a PowerPoint usually and then having a training that way. In terms of testing and checklist, I don't do that on Word because I'm not wanting to make people feel like it is a test. But I can tell you, if I was the all-time trainer, that's what I would do is gamify it. And then I would, I, you know, if I had my dream world, that's what I would be doing is having all the support staff that types all the time be, be gamified into learning things, but not really know they're learning. I just don't, you know, I'm a program manager, so I don't have that kind of top level control. The second question was, what are ways you all recommend organizing trainings online or in a way folks can access easily? I know our my answer was stream. We've used stream and we already put that in the chat and other you two others may have other ways you would organize your online trainings. That was our second question. Yeah, we, we use uh, SharePoint and have, you know, just have a folder with our trainings and organized by topic uh, with descriptions generally. Michael, do you have any other thoughts on that? No, those are, yeah, those are good, uh, good examples for sure. Okay, well, Shelly, can we, so time, time seems to be a problem, right? Um, totally uh, understandable, right? That's always time and resources are, are always a challenge. Uh, you know, when, when you go to your upper management to explain to them the need for this, again, I would focus on there is an ethical duty to remain competent for technology under the rules of professional conduct of your state. And so we've got to figure out a way to allocate those resources so that we continue to train our staff. And then that's they will be more efficient, right? And we will be more clients and be more effective. Also, you may be able to get grants. There's uh, a lot of technology initiatives available. So I would check on those to see if you can get more time and money. Thank you so much. Um, Shelly's going to have our contact information on the slide. You have been a wonderful audience. We want to thank Terry for joining us so much. We really appreciate your time. Um, and thank you to Shelly and LSN Tap for inviting us to present. Please let us know if you have any questions. It's been absolutely wonderful to meet with you all today. Thank you, everybody. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. We will have this posted to our YouTube channel in a few days, and you're welcome to rewatch it there. And of course, we're always a resource for you on providing training. So check us out. We have our um, tech tip series, which are short videos that may cover some of these items that we're, we've talked about today, especially in Word and um, commonly used tools that um, are used in, in the law firm. So thank you so much. Take care, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Have a good afternoon.